Hello friends, my name is Pastor Scott and I'm glad you're here on Extraordinary Connection, a daily devotion website hosted by United Methodist pastors and lay members from across the state of Michigan. There is a classic dream, or maybe it's really a nightmare, that goes something like this. The alarm clock goes off late and when you wake up you realize you are late for class. In a panic, you jump out of bed, dash out the door, race across the quad, rush into the hall where class is, burst in through the door, and find one of three classic things. One, you forgot to get dressed, and now you're standing naked in front of the whole class. Two, they're finishing up an exam, and you're going to fail the class because you slept through the exam. Or three, you show up, and the room is empty. You completely missed the lecture, or class, exam, whatever. Have you ever had that dream? You ever that had that happen to you? Today, I want to talk about George Danzig, who lived that nightmare. George was a grad student working on his PhD at Berkeley just before World War II, and he was a mathematician of some promise. Nothing special, though. One day, George arrived to class very late, so late that the class was empty when he got there. But there were two homework problems put up on the chalkboard. So George lingered a few minutes, copied the homework assignments down, and slunk out of the room embarrassed that he had missed class. He went to the library and began working on the two problems. Both were more challenging than past assignments, but since he missed the lecture, he would probably missed some of the hints that the professor gave, and George didn't feel like he could ask for any help, so he plowed through the two problems by himself. Finally, Finishing the assignment, he submitted the two problems to his professor a couple days later, thinking he had turned them in late and was still embarrassed by the whole thing. But in the grind of academia, he promptly forgot about the assignment because he had to move on to the next problems, the next lectures, and the next set of readings. About six weeks later, George is called into the professor's office. The professor, Jersey Nyman, wants to talk to George about the homework he did. See, it turns out the two problems that were left on the board that day were not homework, they were the lecture. Professor Nyman was showing the other students who did attend class that morning two famous unsolved statistical problems. In math, there are always unsolvable problems, problems that people will spend a lifetime trying to figure out. And George Danzig had solved not one, but two famous unsolved math problems. And not after a lifetime of research and effort, George had solved them in just a few days. And for the academically curious, for his thesis, George famously stuffed his solutions into a binder and submitted. Asked many times in life, how did he ever solve these two problems that no one had ever been able to solve before? George always said, no one told me the problems were impossible. How often do we give up on a problem in our lives before we even start? We tell ourselves it's too hard. I'm not smart enough. I don't have the time or the energy or the ability to solve whatever problem we're facing in our life. And the same in our churches. How often do we say we can't start that ministry or mission because we don't have the resources or the youth or the volunteer base or the finances or the energy or the physical space or whatever? So many times in our life and in our churches, we give up before we begin because we think the problem is too hard. We psych ourselves out and we're sure the problem in front of us is impossible, so we don't even try. But what if we put our trust in God in those situations? Because it's really the classic David and Goliath story. The army of the Philistines and the Israelites are gathered across the, from each other on the battlefield. And the giant Goliath strides out to the center and issues a challenge to the assembled Israelites. He says, send your best soldier out to face me, Goliath taunts. All the soldiers are nervous and no one heads out to face Goliath. They don't even try. Now, young boy David just happens to be delivering some bread to one of his brothers. He sees the, Goli the giant out there and he's ready to head out and challenge him. But no armor, no sword just a slingshot he's practiced with over the years tending his father's sheep. David says to King Saul in 1 Samuel 17, 
Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant David will go out and find him. And Saul responded like many of us would. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. Saul had given up before he even started. But David charged in anyway without knowing better, without giving up before he started. And God was in his midst, and God gave David the victory. Maybe it's dumb luck that David beat Goliath. Maybe George was a better student than people thought. And maybe, just maybe, if God has a plan for you, if God has put a promise on your heart, or if God has cast a vision for your church, maybe those will happen too. But don't find reasons why you can't begin before you even start. Trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding of the problem. He will direct your paths and she will help you tackle that issue, defeat your giant, and solve that problem. Until next time, friends, I'll look for you at extraordinaryconnection.org.